In this video, we're going to put together the quick change gearbox. I haven't got it on the lathe yet, but in the video we will do that because if it was on the lathe, you couldn't see anything. Here's the gearbox upside down on my bench, and I'm just spinning the main power shaft by hand just to show you everything moving. It's actually kind of cool. It's a pretty compact, a lot of gears, a lot of stuff going on, but it's pretty neat. The purpose of this gearbox is to transfer power from the spindle to the lead screw at very specific ratios. And here you can see another view of the gearbox. And then finally you can see the lead screw sticking out the end. That's the final product of this thing. This is a photograph of all the parts. You can see the gearbox casting at the top, the tumbler castings on the right, and all these parts include uh, four shafts, two thrust bearings, two needle bearings, seven bronze bushings at the bottom here, 22 gears, and various pins and keys to hold it all together. This is the casting with all the parts removed, and I just freshly painted it. You can see here is where the main power shaft comes in with bronze bushings on either side. Here is where the tumbler shaft goes. And then there is the cone gear shaft here. And then finally the lead screw comes out the back supported by two thrust bearings. Now there's a protrusion here in the casting and it is for the oil reserve or the oil gallery. Here I put tape on the outside of the casting so you can see where this gallery is. It's a hole through the casting with two holes on top for the oilers. And this is the reserve or the, the gallery for the oil that will drip down to the bearings. Here's another photograph of that hole and it's got two plugs on either end of this gallery. And when I removed the plugs, you can see on the left here, I destroyed them. So I tapped the holes, and then I'm going to replace these plugs with a couple of set screws. Now on either side of the casting, there are additional holes drilled from where the bronze bushings go up and intersect in that oil gallery. So like I said before, the oil will literally just gravity feed down to each of the bronze bearings on either side of this casting. And here I'm just showing you where these uh, holes are. Same thing on the other side. It's a pretty simple system really. It just, oil just literally just drips down into each of the uh, bronze bushings. And there's also a hole drilled from the gallery to this last bushing on the main power shaft. You'll need to install these seven bronze bushings and they have several holes in them to match the gallery holes that are in the casting. What I did was uh, mark them, drill them out, and then I just used a half inch threaded rod to press them into the, into the casting. Now some of the holes for these bushings can be drilled using the holes already in the casting as a as a guide. Uh, I didn't have a 11 sixteenths drill to do this, but you're only going through a little bit of bronze, so I just crafted a drill out of a 1 8 inch steel rod and it worked just fine. Now I also tried to mark, this worked pretty good, I marked the bronze bushings uh, so you could line up the hole with the casting and match the hole you drilled in the bushing to the hole that was already in the casting. Um, so you mark it with a Sharpie pen and 
line it up, and it worked pretty good. I had to do them a couple of them twice to get them lined up properly, but you can see the marks here. Now, after all the bronze bushings are in and all the holes are cut, you need to put a felt plug, and here's the old ones that I pulled out of there so you can kind of see how big they were. This micrometer was set on a quarter of an inch. But you have to put these plugs in, otherwise the oil will just drain out. So it helps to, to uh, prevent the oil from leaving that gallery so fast uh, that, that it just makes a huge mess. Here are the bushings installed with the plugs in, and uh, we're ready to move on to the next step. This is the main drive shaft and two compound gears. The first gear is keyed to the shaft, so it rotates with the shaft. And the second gear spins independent of the shaft. And I got these on backwards, by the way. They're supposed to be the larger one towards the nut. And then don't forget the felt wick. Uh, the first thing I did was make sure that these gears will fit uh, between the casting and the bronze bushing that you've installed here. It should have about a tenth of an inch clearance, maybe slightly more, because you could, I'll show you later, but you can smash that bushing together to get the proper clearance later. Oil up the bushings, oil up the shaft as well. Now when you put these felt wicks in place, they fit the groove in the shaft pretty well, but as soon as you put oil on it, they expand to about double their size, which makes it a little harder to get the gears on. So just kind of be aware of that when you're putting this stuff together. Slide the shaft in and then the first compound gear, which I have on correctly this time, slides on to that keyway. The first gear then is locked to the shaft. Then comes on the second gear, which spins on the shaft independently. Slide it on, tap it in. Now once you get the shaft on, there's supposed to be only 4,000th clearance, which I'm measuring here. So what I did is put a 6,000th clearance and then tap that bushing. And you can see I had to bang it on the other side a little bit to loosen it up. But once I did that, I had a nice clean four to five thousandths clearance. So the first gear then spins on the shaft and the second gear spins independent of the shaft. When you do that, the shoulder, there should be a slight shoulder on the outside of the casting here for the shaft. Now, you drill a hole in the bushing now and you put this quarter, I'm sorry, an eighth inch pin in into the bushing. It holds the bushing in exactly the right spot now and the clearance of four thousandths is maintained by that bushing for this four, first two compound gears. Spin the shaft around so the large side of the taper pin hole is up. Install the collar. I had to tap it in just a little bit to get it lined up perfectly. And then you can slide in the paper, taper pin. Now, I did not drive it home yet because there's a chance you've got to remove it. So I waited a little bit before I drove it in uh, permanently. Now we're ready to move to the next step. Uh, the thrust bearing uh, is installed on the lead screw. And this is the lead screw gear, which is attached by this lock nut. Now, the thrust bearing is designed so that it counteracts the, a lot of pressure that's going to be on that lead screw. This is the old bearing that came out of the machine 
and it is an angular contact bearing. And you can see the inner race and the outer race have that angular portion on it. There's the inner race, there's the outer race. So then the bearing, ball bearings actually fit against that race in an angular fashion to counteract the thrust of the lead screw. Here I destroyed this thing when I tore it apart, uh, but you can see how it goes together here. Again, I use the half inch threaded rod to press that bearing into the casting. Nice. Here is the cone pulley shaft. It contains most of the gears in this gearbox. And as you can see, I've got a shaft here, and there's a keyway with a key in it. And these gears fit onto the keyway so that they're locked onto the shaft. It's a good idea to assemble these things ahead of time outside of the gearbox on a trial basis just to make sure everything fits together. There are no burrs that are preventing uh, these gears sliding on because once you try to put it into the gearbox, it's really tight and it'll be frustrating if you've got a burr or some goofy thing is preventing it from going together. This, there's a pin opposite the keyway that just helps provide more support for these gears because there's a lot of torque uh, pressing against them in the gearbox. This last gear has a hole for the pin halfway through so it locks the pin against the casting. Once these are all in place and tight against the shoulder on the shaft, the taper pin goes in and, and these are all locked together and locked with the shaft. Here goes the taper pin and locks all these together. Then come two compound gears and then a final gear. These, these last gears on this side of the shaft, they all spin independent of the speed of the shaft. And I'll talk about that a little more later. Again, this pin will be locked in place against the casting. Yeah, don't forget the felt wick. Uh, it provides oil to the compound gears that are spinning on the shaft. 